Hi, I'm Sandra Markle, and a special shout out today to the 1964 graduating class from Fostoria High School in Fostoria, Ohio. And I'm asked to share just a quick overview of my publishing career. And I wanted to do that with some of the questions that children always ask me when I do virtual visits. And one of those is always, well, how did you get started and get interested in science? And it's because even though I've written for a number of different publishers their science textbooks for elementary schools, there were no elementary science textbooks when I was in elementary school. There were none until after Russia sent up the Sputnik satellite. And then in Fostoria, they decided that children in elementary school should begin to learn science. And so they hired one teacher, Mr. Vance, who came one day a week to my school. I lived for Mr. Vance Day because he always came. There were no science textbooks. He came with a box of things. And we explored, we discovered. We had magnets and batteries and bulbs. And we looked at things like air pressure, like taking plastic plates and putting a paper towel right in the middle of it. And knowing that air pressure is down and in and up, so you can take a glass almost full of water and put that paper towel so it has a nice seal and the plate right over that glass and then you could hold it just long enough to turn it over and you'd be able to see that less air pressure inside and more underneath made science magic. Well, that was something that was always for me to do, not only for teaching for about 10 or 11 years, but when I was Ms. Wiz on television. And in fact, my very first published book was about winter science activities. Growing up in Foster, Ohio, I had lots of winter to explore and have activities. And my first scholastic books were all science, fun, activity kinds of things. So then they asked me, what was your most exciting experience researching your books? Well, that's hard to choose. There were a lot. I did a lot of things with NASA. And so I had a chance to actually be under one of the shuttles when they were repairing it. Every tile on the shuttle was unique and they had replaced any that fell off. I had a chance to be in the shuttle trainer. I had a chance to try out the man maneuvering unit, the tester that they had that they would then fly in space. And when Sally Ride became the first US woman in space, I had a chance to be with the families and the press, the closest you could be to that launch. And the ground shook and the air shook, and it was amazing. But also amazing and very exciting was I had a chance to go three times to Antarctica. There I am at the South Pole. I also took the Bowling Green flag. Any of you that went to Bowling Green State University, I also shared that. I may still be the only alumni that has been to the South Pole. I certainly was then. But one of the exciting things was I was there one whole winter when we had a little bit colder weather than Fostoria. We averaged minus 50 to minus 70. We hit minus 129. But <clears throat> of the two summers that I was there, I had a chance to camp out with 60,000 plus Adelie penguins. And one of those trips, I was there with two women scientists, and all of a sudden, a whiteout happened. So the winds were so strong that all of the little sort of glitter dust snow, which is the way snow was there, was so thick, you could barely see in front of your face, and we could barely stand up in it. It was too strong a wind for them to send a helicopter for us, too far and too dangerous for snowmobiles, so we had to be there. And by the time we got to our pup tents where we had our sleeping bags, they were shredded. We managed to link arms and get our sleeping bags one by one into our supply hut. Now that was wood about waist high, with big metal arches and stronger canvas over the top. But by the time we were all three inside, that was also starting to shred. So all I could do was take off my heavy boots, 
leave all the rest of my many layers on, get in my sleeping bag and pull it over my head and stay that way for 12 hours while the snow blew in and the snow blew out before the storm stopped and they could rescue us. But I survived because here I am and I have done a number of books on Antarctica based on that. And certainly one of those was this one. This is the Danish version of A Mother's Journey. It's one of my biggest award winners from there. And another very special book for me was certainly Pioneering Space. And that one came about because when I was doing the things for NASA, and I was at one book about the, the space shuttle was about to be published when the Challenger blew up. And it was within an hour of that time that the publisher was on the phone to me saying, we can't publish the book. It's gonna to be too upsetting, nobody will buy it. And then probably the most amazing phone call I've ever had was from June Scobie, the wife of the pilot of the Challenger, who said to me, you have to get that book published because if people had stopped going west when pioneers died, we'd never have settled the west. It took 10 years for pioneering space to come out, but it did. And I do also want to share with that, kids always say, well, what was the most fun research you've ever had? But I'd have to add to that adjective, delicious. I lived in New Zealand for about 14 years, and I was fairly close to the Cadbury Chocolate Factory. So a publisher said, would you like to write a chocolate, a sweet history? And I said, oh yes, because I knew it meant I would have to do a tour of the chocolate factory. And I did. And at every place we looked at the different kinds of candy, the different kinds of chocolate they were doing, they said, would you like a sample? And I always said, yes. At the very end of the main factory, we went just outside. There was a big brick tower, no windows, just a metal door. And they said, well, now you need to go inside and wait. So they creak, creak, opened the metal door and I went up three flights of steps, very dimly lit, and I'm standing there thinking, why am I here? And then bright lights came on, and what I thought was the ceiling wasn't. It opened, and a huge, wider than I can stretch my arms, waterfall of melted chocolate flowed past me. I did not reach out to try to get a, a finger dip into that, but it was amazing. The smell was amazing. It was a very special experience. And then I want to tell you, because kids always say, what is your favorite books to have worked on? I'm going to go right over here and show you my very special series. And that is, what if you had? This series started out with this one, when my granddaughter Allison fell down and knocked out two front teeth. And we imagined, well, what if you got animal teeth instead? And it has grown and is now over 5 million books in print. And that is also in many different languages, including in Spanish and Chinese. Well, they also say to me, how many books have you published? And I certainly want to share that with you because there's a lot. But come with me, when we do a virtual visit, I always show. So come around the corner. We're going to see the book closet. All the books that I've published and some special souvenirs. Get ready. It's right in here. And here it is. The book closet. There are over 270 titles that I've published now. And... I really haven't counted recently. I think I'm close to 300. I have four coming out this year. I am um, working on books for 2025 and 2026 and certainly don't intend to stop anytime soon. And so there you can see and some really special souvenirs that I've gotten with it, including there is a 10,000 year old woolly mammoth hair that we always show off in a frame, that when I was doing Outside and Inside Woolly Mammoths, a scientist gave that to me. And so, let me share a little ending for you. 
And that is what's really been special about doing all this is it's not just the research, not just the publishing. It's when a parent sends me a picture and says, my son would not play with any of his Christmas presents until he read the book we gave him, your book, your newest. Or a teacher sent me a picture that just had to share how much a child loved my book. Or a little boy stopped by to see me when I was at a school and said, oh, can you help me get one of the books because I've worn it out. Of course, I sent it to him. Or the bat expert I called to interview and found out that she said, I'm a bat expert because one of your books got me interested in bats. So, yes, this is a brief overview of what I've done. But when we were graduating, somebody, probably Mrs. Link, said we were a class that was going to make a difference. And I'm not going to stop. And you shouldn't stop with your family, with your neighbors, with your career mates, wherever you can. Let's keep making a difference. Great to be with you. Bye-bye.